Hi boys and girls, auntie and uncle, welcome back to my channel. My name is CK and if you're new here, my channel is Psychology, where I bring my viewers around the world to see and explore. And today, today is a very special episode. I know I said all my episodes are special, but this is really, this is it. This is really legit special. I am in the airport of Miri here in the state of Sarawak. Imagine a village or a town here in Malaysia which has absolutely zero crime. There are no pollution, no heavy industry, and the people there lived in a serene highland environment with the best rice, the best pineapple and the best quality salt here in Malaysia. Sounds like Shangri-La, right? Today I am bringing you to the village in the highlands of Barrio, a mysterious place here in the state of Sarawak. Now, Barrio is situated in inland rural Sarawak, very close to the Kalimantan border, and it is inhabited by the Kalabit people and they only are about less than 6,000 of them here in Malaysia. They are the smallest ethnic group here in Malaysia and less than 1,800 of Kalabi people still live in the Barrio Highlands called the Shangri-La of Malaysia. Barrio is one of the most pristine places in Malaysia, untouched by heavy industry, super remote. So I'm gonna have a special transportation to bring me there and along the way I will tell you the people of Kalabit and their homeland of the Barrio Highlands here in the state of Sarawak. According to the oral history of the Kalabit people, all human beings were originated from the mountain. When a big flood covered the earth, some of them built rafts and boats and went to coastal areas. Those stranded on the highlands remain to this day as the Kalabit people. The Kalabit were headhunters prior to early contacts in the 1920s. In 1939, Frank Davidson of Borneo Evangelical Mission visited the Kalabit people in Barrio. Since then, the Kalabit changed their belief from animism to Christianity. In the closing month of the Pacific War during World War II, Barrio became a base for Operation Samut, Operation Ants, an anti-Japanese military operation. When a small force under Tom Harrison landed here, by parachute in March 1945. The courageous Kalabit people participated in sabotaging Japanese operation in Sarawak. The first school in Barrio was established in 1946. A new concrete airstrip completed in 1996. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. to see the world in action what we can be life with no distractions we'll get away this is what we wait for hello, hello. hello. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be what the water area uh-huh uh, hot water in okay oh, so cooling actually not hot it was hot just now it was hot really just now warm, yeah. it can get really warm here from 10 o'clock to like 2 oh Wow! Yeah, you will, you will be here. Yay! Yeah. Woo! Nice! Nothing special, it's a long house. It's great. The whole room. So, this will be the, the bath and toilet. And mm. Here as well. Uh, here. Too. Living area. Wow! Uh, yeah, you can have a good view. Here. A good view here. <sighs> can I retire here? Oh, 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 so one unit, one fireplace. How do you arrange who stay which okay. unit? Le? The, from the founder of the longhouse. The yeah, founder of the longhouse yeah, will yeah. arrange. Yeah. La. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, this will be in that walk. <laughs> <laughs> in that walk. <laughs> oh. These are the names registered in the IC. Like 
for example, Abu Kuan. So this is date of birth and his IC number. So he he become a father, then he become yeah, Mika he, Bala. He, he got the first son. First son. Yeah, and then he got his first grandchild. Yeah. They changed oh, grandchild. Yeah, and One great more. Grandchild. Great grandchild. So so you 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 promoted 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 yes, something right. like that lah. So oh, okay, like got it. Status in the community. Naming is very important. Very important because. Like your status in the Tulabi Corp. Because naming is like giving you a status lah. Yes, yes, oh. yes, yes. A lot of people have probably have the same name. The ah. same Tulabi name. Mm -hmm. So changing of name means okay, you already uh, up, 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 upgrade. Upgrade. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Become an elder and lah. People should address you with your new name. So meaning this is only for men, right? M both men and women. Men women. and women also change name. Change, yeah. Uh, when they upgrade, but a person who never married just stays, stays the yeah, same. Yeah. Oh. Then uh, the layout is this is what we call the tawa. Tawa. Tawa means the living area. Uh, in the long Iba long house, we call ruai. Ruai. Yeah, you heard it before. So. Not really. Then that's the tawa, and then below below the rooms, and then the turtle. The turtle. Oh. Yeah, the kitchen, the dining, the so kitchen. Tawa. Rai yeah. and then the turtle. The Tilung, the turtle. Okay. Yeah, just three just main the layout the long house. Yeah, mm. the layout. We used to put like ornaments like uh, game, game skulls like. Uh, yeah, yeah, the the headhunter yeah, activities yeah, lah. Like. Now you put uh, now he has achievements in, <laughs> achievement in yeah. Dato. He was the first Kalabi to work as a government servant. Oh wow! For the, the museum. Um, Museum, oh. Yeah. But, oh, this is when he was going to work lah. Yeah, and oh, this, he was the first one to have a bicycle. Oh, he was the first one to have a bicycle. When he retired, he brought back the bicycle and he oh. like, wow, bicycle. A bicycle? Leopard fangs. Oh, wow, the, the fangs. The hornbill. The hornbill. Yeah. Beak or something like that. Yeah. Beak, okay. Bear. Bear. Cloud leopard. Leopard. Hornbill. Hornbill. And gibbon. Gibbon. So if you can find these four, have like the fangs or the claws or the feathers uh, that means you are very respect, respected respected hunter lah not just a, a man when you, yeah a man a real man oh a real so man you talk, everybody has to listen oh because you got these four yeah, items these this four items either one or two oh because I wonder if every very, very hard. hard to get so a long time ago when ladies who don't have long ears and no tattoo Nobody want them. Oh! Nobody want to marry you. So the, the beauty standard is... <laughs> beauty standard is long ear and <laughs> tattoo lah. Yeah. The headpiece. Headgear, headgear. Uh -huh. yeah. One of the ladies, uh, you notice that? It's called the peta. Petai. Yeah, peta. 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 Peta, okay. Yeah, peta. So, long time ago, ladies had peta and necklace and belt um, made from beadworks. Uh, noble, nobility. Nobility people. Where? Yeah. Oh, that's you. Mmm. When we have big party, normally we cut this into two, and then it becomes our scoop for drinking. Our oh. first activity here in Barrio is to hike the prayer mountain. Mountain or hill? Prayer. Mountain. Prayer mount. Always a mountain. Yeah. So as I told you, in the 1930s. People here converted to Christianity, but in 1973 there was a second big conversion, and people went to this mountain to do their conversion and then their, you know, their prayers. So that's why they call the prayer mountain, and this is like the first thing visitors do here in Barrio. So I heard it's not too difficult. <laughs> I haven't hiked for for a while. After I think Bung Changgoi was the last that I hike in uh, Kuching. So let's go and check this uh, mountain out. Wow, look at the paddy field. <sighs> oh, Eyes on the freeway, Bonnie and Clyde. A classic cliche, we're on the run. This is what we waited for. Oh, yeah. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow. Ah, high yeah. five! <laughs>
Wow, it's very nice here. Oh my god! Enjoy it, man. Good time. Look at that. Not very difficult to climb, but you still need a guide. You still need a guide because you have to climb at a very, very slow pace. The Galapit Highlands are already 1,000 meters. 1,000 meters, right? 1,002 meters above sea level. This is about 300, so it's 1,600 meters altogether. 1,004 meters altogether. So the air gets very thin. Really have to stop every like half an hour to, to take in the breath because the air gets really thin. And you do need a guide for that to warn you that proper shoes and everything, of course. Ropes, trails are very good condition, but lots of ants though. And, and we're next to the, the Bulong Tao National Park, which means our forest in Galapit language. So there might be wild animals. So don't, don't, don't hike alone. Hire a guide. And uh, now we enjoy the view. With me something in the soil in Barrio because the pineapple here are very soft after they are super super sweet I'm having pineapple every meal here in Barrio We're hunting for the right pineapple Pineapple. Dude, this is the sweetest pineapple soil I have ever. And the water. The soil and the water that makes this pineapple. <laughs> I don't wanna go home looking for a reason to stay here all night. I wonder, do you feel it too? Magic between me and you, the way that you make me feel. You wonder if I feel the same. You are looking at the most prized possession here in Barrio and the Calabi people. These are the Barrio rice field. Now, Barrio rice is the most expensive rice in Malaysia because it's very low yield. You can harvest only once a year and it takes a long process to plant these rice. You cannot use machine because of the gradient of the land here in the Kalabit Highlands. All of them needs to be planted manually by hand now barrio rice contains very low glucose in them and so it has one of the lowest sugar containing this rice so it's supposed to be very very healthy and to transport these rice out to the other parts of the world you need transport and that's why these rice are so expensive the barrio people use the rice to make like some sort of a soft rice called lubat layak and they wrap it around leaves and the farmer used to carry them to work in the field as lunch and it lasts a long time stays very fresh this lubat layak the barrio rice which i get to have every day here in barrio it works very well with my stomach the incredible barrio rice here in the Galapit Highlands. <sighs> Look at all of these incredible. Don't share any secrets 
So I thought I tried every laksa in Malaysia, the Johor laksa, the Penang laksa, the laksa in Kelantan, the laksa in Sarawak. But to my shocking, there's a barrio laksa. And I think it's almost the same as Sarawak laksa, but they put capsicum inside the laksa. Everything is fresh, organic. So there you go. Have you ever seen capsicum in the Malaysian laksa no, right? So this is this is the specialty. Mmm. I hope this is the final version of laksa I have, I have to go through in Malaysia. But yeah, to my surprise, Barrio Laksa. If you're in Barrio, you have to come and um, taste this. It's in the marketplace. There's several places that they have it. Mmm. 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 That is the Kalabit Highlands. Are you already enchanted by the Kalabit Highlands? Well, I'm sure you are. And if you're not, then all I can say is there's something wrong with you. In this segment, I will tell you the tips when you want to visit Barrio here in the Kalabit Highlands. When is the best time to visit? There is a food festival in July. It's very happening where a lot of traditional activities are showcased to visitor. It is a quite a big festival, very happening. You can go camping and July is the best time for stargazing. There's a few camping sites here and if you are those people who love to look at the celestials above, then the stars are ready for you in July because it is the dry season. January and February would be also a good time. They only harvest once a year the barrio rice, so they harvest it during the month of January, like end January to beginning of February. So if you want to watch the harvest, it's a pretty big deal here, then I would say January and February. Secondly is you must, I think every Malaysian or even visitor should experience the stay in the longhouse. I mean, I have stayed in numerous places all over the world. I stayed on a boat, I stayed on a ship, I stayed in a castle, but I tell you the longhouses are just incredible. I mean, the Asal longhouse is the oldest longhouse in Barrio and imagine having dinner with everybody all your neighbors watching the kids play hide and seek that that is really something else that i think everybody should just come and experience i won't tell you the details of everything i experienced you just have to come and live in the long house and special thanks to auntie rang she was just incredible she she had to work in the field and then come home and cook for me three meals a day she cooked for me it was just that homestay was just the most incredible homestay and and auntie rang is just one of those incredible women it's just really shocked me that the the women here are so productive they they do handicraft, they have coffee shop, they work in the field. You get so much out of that homestay experience. Now, Barrio is wilderness, so you're gonna go hiking. And um, I did the Prayas Mountain and I also did the waterfall. The waterfall is actually more challenging. And so for hiking and going to see the waterfall, you really need to have uh, really good shoes, of course, that goes without saying. Um, this is, <laughs> there's a lot of leeches here as well, so bring your leech socks with you. Uh, these two, and also hiking gloves. These three, please bring, because it's quite challenging. It's not a real hike, I would say, but um, very challenging, especially if you're coming, you know, in the wet season, like, like I did. You are breathing the freshest air in Malaysia, zero carbon emission <laughs> here and I walked every evening um because it's so cooling here it's about 19 celsius at the moment and it's just cool breezes all the time but you do need uh sun protection so bring your sunblock because the uv here we're in the highlands and the uv here are 
no joke because you can walk for hours without realizing that you're getting a sunburn. So the flights are very limited. As you can see, there are many seats in the airplane, but because the twin order engine can only carry so much weight, so there's usually eight to nine people that can be allowed to be on board. So book well in advance. It's only two flights, I think, from Miri and there's a flight from Marudi. So the local toll tells me that one of the tricks you can do is you can actually drive from Miri to Marudi to, to fly to Barrio. So Marudi to Barrio, there's uh, less competition and it's easier, much easier to get air tickets. So the tip I would give you is really to respect the culture here. Everybody is so friendly. So after the third day, everyone that passes by, I kind of have to say hello. <laughs> Because everybody say hello to me and you just like obliged to say hello to everybody and talk to everybody. But which you should because the Kalabi people are really the friendliest people that I know. Um, they just, they're just so friendly and there's also a minority of Banan people who live here as well and you can see them going hunting. Yeah, so those are the tips um, for you to come to Barrio. I think every Malaysian should come here. This is truly uh, an incredible experience. I mean, I've been all over the world. This is one place that I wish I would have come years earlier and I'll certainly come back. So check out other videos of Sarawak. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy my video here in Barrio and I hope you visit Barrio and I will see you in my next video. Bye from the magical highlands of Kalabic here in Barrio. Bye!